Your burger is ready. you enjoy your meal. Four people used the back door that very same night. Huh? Well, I might be blind as a bat, but as you can certainly see, I have two wonderfully functional ears. <laughs> Four people used the back door two days ago? Yeah, that's right. <coughs> Who was the first person to use the back door? Someone big. Unlocked the door, stepped inside, then came right back out. Who was the second person to use the back door? A man. Just a few minutes after the first person. He came back out muttering, Ungrateful bastard. Then, he threw something in the trash and walked back in. Oh, no, wait. Before that, he gave me a coin. A coin? I mean, do I look like I need spare change, huh? I mean, I'm staying at the Million Star Hotel, for God's sake. <laughs> Who was the third person to use the back door? Judging by the quiet footsteps, I'd say it was someone small. I'd say it was about 30 minutes after the second person came out. Whoever it was threw something in the trash and stood in front of me for a moment. Then, I heard a click. And finally, I heard trailing laughter in that direction. Who was the fourth person to use the back door? Someone big. I recall heavy breathing. The person left in a hurry running in that direction. <coughs> you were acting a bit strange before, but now you seem fine. Why is that? Hey, you got great vision, sense of smell, and hearing. Why is that? Well, I'm a cat. Well, I'm a goat. There's a chest expander in your cart. A what expander? A thingamajig with three springs. Oh, the thingamajig with springs. Oh, I, I got it from the trash back there. I wonder what it's like to be blind. Would I cope? Blind and legless. How does he get by? Looks like someone used it as a punching ball. How does he get by? Could he have been a train conductor? How does he get by?
Where did you get that paint can? In a trash can in the back. A paint can and a thingamajig with springs. What a night. That's all for now. Thanks. This much. The chest expander in the trash belongs to Yale. Do you remember anything else about the day you found the thingamajig with the springs and the paint can? Yeah, uh, no. <coughs> wait, 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 yeah. Well, no, now that I think of it, uh, no. Hey, pal, how about thanking a good-looking goat with a cigarette? <coughs> <coughs> Of course. Here you go. <laughs> yeah, you think you're not responsible for my pathetic state? Think you're not to blame? It's the government that shipped me off to war. They shipped me off too. Oh, right. So then you know what it's like to kill, too. Well, then another sad hobo shouldn't be a problem for you, Professor. I'd rather not talk about it. Okay, okay, I understand. Wait, wait, but uh, that's not what I wanted to say. Oh, well, you know we goats tend to jump from one thing to another. <laughs> the government paid for everything. Army fatigues, rations, weapons, <laughs> lodging, hookers, drugs. <clears throat> Do you know where that money comes from? <laughs> taxes! Your taxes, my dear friend. You help them cut my legs. <laughs> they declare <clears throat> war, war, every chance they get so that the weapon industry that finances their campaigns get gets richer and, and richer and richer. And that's how we finance their wars. So, the slightest connection with corruption turns us into accomplices. Unless one manages to keep at arm's length. <sighs> that is what I did, my loyal disciple. At the Million Star Hotel! <laughs> so, do you like your master? Great. Hey, what's your name? You never told me...
Do you remember anything else about Joe Dunn and Bobby Yale's argument? No, not, uh, not really, no. Only Joe yelling. If you do, I'll call off the fight and kick you out of the gym. Not all folks are as open-minded as Dunn. I happen to know who painted the lockers. Arthur Tucker. I knew it. I knew it was him, that bastard. I'm gonna whip the white out of him. Joe Dunn or Joey Dunn? Huh? Uh, nobody called him Joey. Well, maybe his wife. Although, she didn't call him anything after she died. <laughs> I once shredded a bag like that, just out of pure rage. Someone should weld the iron bar on those panels. Looks like Dunn liked to measure his daughter and Bobby Yale each year. Sonia's measurements stop at 18, and there's a gap in Bobby's between ages 15 and 17. I remember that fight back when Jake was coming up the ranks. Miss Dunn, can I run a couple of questions by you? If they help you find Yale, go ahead. What's in those papers you're going through? Red tape. Great. If you find something, please let me know. I thought you were the detective. You do your job, and I'll do mine. Did you and your father get along? Let's just say our relationship got better when I left for Sunny University. An eight hour drive from here. Meaning? I'll lay it out for you, Mr. Blacksad. My father, Joe Dunn, disappeared the day my mother died. He became a shell of himself. Joe Dunn, my legal guardian. A man who gave me food, shelter, clothing, and an education. And that's more than you need to know. Did you get along with Bobby Yale? Forget it. I wouldn't give a damn about him if it weren't for this stupid gym his stupid fight is supposed to save. Happy? What can you tell me about Jake? I thought you were friends. Guess I was wrong. 
He and my father were friends, so don't go down that road. What do you think about Mary, the cleaning lady? Can't say, I, I barely know her. And I'm not one who's quick to judge other people. Big, bright eyes. Looks well rested. Either she didn't mourn her father, or she really knows how to work that makeup. Nice and steady heartbeat. What the? What's wrong? Someone's taking pictures from the rooftop. Are you sure? I'll go take a look. Now, who's that rope for, Miss Dunn? Mm. Weekly. Uh, 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 uh. What the hell are you doing here? <laughs> hey, hey, look! Isn't that Cassidy? <laughs> don't change the subject, you sad little... Why don't we settle this over ice cream, huh, Judd? Just like in the good old days. <laughs> How did you get up here? I don't want anyone to see you. Everyone, even the most hapless of creatures, has a gift. Something that makes them special, that makes them worth knowing. Foul-smelling weakly is no exception. No matter what he does, it's impossible to stay mad at him for too long. Mmm. Ah, this bourbon shake is delicious. Want a taste? You know I don't like milk. Your loss. So, Joe Dunn hangs himself and leaves his gym to his daughter, which makes her the first woman to run a boxing gym, I think. I don't think Dunn killed himself. What? Do you have a suspect? Any leads? No, it's just a hunch. Although... I haven't identified the murderer just yet. Well, it doesn't really matter. It's just a hunch. I wouldn't bet my life on it. I've got other suspects. Like O'Leary, the bookmaker. Desmond O'Leary? The same O'Leary who used to date Helen Moore? America's sweetheart? Now that's a woman. And then there's the Wallace. Who was that guy? Uh, come on! You've never heard of Frank Cassidy? The president of the Boxing Managers Association? Who's also Stone's agent. Bobby Yale's rival. Hey, he might have a motive, right? Hmm. He might know something about Dunn's death, right? I decided to ask Weekly to investigate Cassidy. My reasons? Weekly had already proven to be nosy. The farther I kept him from the gym, the better. Plus, any information found on Cassidy could be useful. You never know. But with Weekly, you just never know what the best approach might be. Should I give him an order or a subtle suggestion? Yeah, you might be right about Cassidy. But, hmm. 
It won't be easy to make him talk. He seems like a pretty tough cookie. Only a thorough and efficient detective could pull it off. But the problem is, I already got enough on my plate. You're a lucky man, John Black said. I don't follow. You just found the thorough detective you need. Oh, of course. What a great idea. How did I not think of you? Hey, don't sweat it. But you'll have to do me a favor. Tell Sonya Dunn that a legendary journalist from What's News wants an interview. Weekly, please. Well, if not, bye-bye, Cassidy. All right. I'll see what I can do. Great. That's settled, then. So, was there really someone on the roof? There was, but it was just a friend of mine. Oh, so now your friends are spying on me. Look, I had nothing to do with it. I even got him to stop. Sure you did. Dunn kept files on the gym's staff and clients. Name, address, and date of birth. I saw you arguing with a guy named Cassidy. What did he want? Uh, remember the fight that needs to take place in order to save this gym? Well, Cassidy manages Yale's rival, Stone, the reigning champion. If Bobby doesn't show up, he'll lose money. Maybe not a lot, but enough to care. Did you find anything interesting in those papers? No. Investigation work takes time, as I'm sure you know. I'd like to take a look inside that safe now. Could you give me the combination? I'd love to help you, but my mother's birthday used to be the combination, but I already tried it. Could you tell me your birthday? Of course. March 6th. And... The year? I'm 24, Mr. Blacksad. You do the math. No luck. Damn. Seemed like a happy family. Dunn's room had quite a view.
Dunn kept files on the gym's staff and clients. Name, address, and date of birth. He opened it during the war? That's odd. Thank you, Mr. Blackshack. Does the postman always leave your mail on the floor? I don't know. I... What's wrong? It's... It's my mother's wedding ring. Who had it? I don't know. My father wore it on his pinky finger after she died. Not always, apparently. Will you find out why? I'll try. But there's something else I'm worried about. This might have something to do with the... Your father's death and Bobby Yale's disappearance. Oh, oh my, yes. It could be. Will you please give me a moment? Of course. Why did she have the ring in the first place? Feeling any better? Yeah, I guess. Thanks.
You're gonna like what I have to tell you about the Dunn case. I think Dunn was dating the lady that cleans the gym. Wow, thanks for the gossip, so... They might have even been engaged, if I'm not mistaken. Great. Call Woods News. They'll know what to do with such an incredibly interesting piece of information. No, I mean, why kill yourself if you're in love and about to get married? Alright, you got a point there. Maybe, but it seems no more than a hunch right now. I need solid evidence. Hmm, I think that's it. Dunn kept files on the gym's staff and clients. Name, address, and date of birth. to the safe. to that very day. taken done for a gun owner. You open the safe? Yeah, and I think you need to see this. Can you tell me what it says? All right. I think this might be useful for the investigation, Mr. Detective. He left everything to me. Except some boxing trophies and knickknacks that'll go to Bobby Yale. Do you think Bobby Yale read it before he disappeared? Maybe. When was it signed? It was written four years ago, just weeks after I moved to Buffalo. Congratulations. You're one lucky lady. I'll pretend I didn't hear that. All right. Thanks. A few bucks. Just petty cash.
You see, I've got this friend. He's a journalist, and, uh, the thing is, well... Uh, he would like to interview you. Why? A woman running a boxing gym? That's quite the story. And how did this friend of yours find out, exactly? Well, you know how these things... I don't even want to hear you. I just hope you prove your professional worth before the day is over. I think I know who had your mother's ring. You do? Mary Purnell. I think she was in love with your father. Thank you. Thank you. I never asked about the gym's insurance. That's exactly what I'm reading now. So far it looks like your standard small business policy. Did you find anything interesting in those papers? No. Investigation work takes time, as I'm sure you know. I don't know why. Something just doesn't add up. Did you know Joe Dunn had a gun in his safe? No way, man. He hated firearms. Although... When Bobby Yale was a teenager, he went through a crazy phase. Even dropped out of the gym and joined the gang. Nothing serious. Early one morning, he broke in the gym. Joe was already here and caught him red-handed. Bobby pointed the gun at Dunn and ordered him to open the safe. So, Joe opened it and asked Bobby to put the gun aside leave the gang and start boxing again. I got here five minutes later and found Bobby crying like a baby in Joe's arms. Then he just stood up and put on his gloves. I think I have a new lead on the Dunn case. Dunn and the gym's cleaning lady were about to get married. Uh, this again? The combination on Dunn's safe was her birthday. He even gave her a ring. You know, your typical suicidal bliss. Okay, I'm still not convinced, but I might have something. Life is off and off key, like a bad song. The notes come together but feel flat, unable to create anything resembling music. And yet, there are ways to string them together to create harmony. Ways that are not always entirely in our hands. You look tired, John. You look pretty tired yourself. Yep, I'm beat. I'm starving. 
Just got back from the annual police medical. Not only did I have to fast, but I also had to chug two enormous glasses of water. John, you all right? I've had better days, and I'll have them again, I hope. We both deserve to. The thing is, I'd love to help you out with this case, but I can't. You know I work for the state of New York. If I had any information, I couldn't share it with a private eye. Even if it was lying on top of this table. You drank two huge glasses of water. How are your kidneys coping with that? Yeah, you're right. Maybe I should uh, go to the... If you'll excuse me. Now I feel even thinner. So do my kidneys. Thanks. Truth is, John, it all seemed clear to me before, but now... Please, promise me you won't take the law into your own hands. I'd like to think we're not just vigilantes. I'll try, but sometimes there's no alternative. All right. In any case, keep me posted, will you? Friend, you can count on it. Take care, John. As always, Smirnoff had given me new, potentially relevant information. Not to mention second thoughts. When an old dog like him gets that serious, one must be prepared to bite. something. What? I know how much Dunn meant to you. I'm very sorry for your loss. Um, I don't think I... Uh... Your handwriting on the envelope. Your date of birth on the safe. Oh. My goodness. I... I can't talk here. My shift is over in ten minutes. Can you wait a while? Can I get a refill over here, Mary? Coming right up. We've been seeing each other for almost two years. It all started with, well, weekdays I start cleaning the gym at dawn. 
before my shift at the diner. Joey always came in early, just a little after I got there. He used to say it was the best time for the worst task of the day. Oh, I know exactly what he meant. Paperwork. He just hated it. But that was just him. Instead of putting off the things he couldn't stand, he did them as soon as possible. One morning, he saw me crying. I was having a rough day and... And he took advantage of your vulnerability, right? No. We're talking about the nicest man I've ever met. He pointed at the coffee machine. You need a cup of joe and some fresh air. That was the first of many cups on the rooftop. Which is where you seduced him. I'm a decent woman, Mr. Blacksad. You might be too young to understand this, but real love has little to do with seduction. One day, we realized those rooftop coffees were the best part of our day, so we began to spend more time together. But you never told anyone. Why did you keep it secret? For Sonia's sake. She and Joey drifted apart after her mother's death. He was afraid that our relationship would only make matters worse. Until one day, on the rooftop, we realized just how serious our relationship was. And we decided to turn those moments into a lifetime. So, he asked you to marry him? Yes, of course. He gave me the wedding ring and we decided to tell the world. He said he needed to share that happiness with his little girl. Turns out, he wasn't that happy after all. What about you? How did you feel about telling Sonya? Maybe you already noticed, I, I have a slight cold. I really should be heading home. Too much coffee and fresh air? Why? Why would you say that? I lost my scarf a while back, not sure where. And now, if you'll excuse me, that's my bus stop. A pleasure to speak with you, Mr. Blackstone. Right. the can while he was arguing with Yale. I guess that explains why he threatened to call the fight off. barely reach the noose. There's no way Dunn hanged himself. Not on his own, at least. If you had a motive to kill Dunn, but you certainly had the murder weapon.
Christ. Did Yale kill Dunn just because he wanted to call off the fight? I always knew Bobby had issues. But I never thought he'd go that far. Everything seems to point in that direction. I'm certain of it. But he could have been framed, couldn't he? In any case, that doesn't change a thing. It does, actually. Now we know he didn't kill himself. My father's still dead, and you still haven't found Bobby Yale. Nothing has changed. Opening the safe and finding my father's will won't help us achieve anything. So please hurry. Time's wasting. Sonia's indifference never ceased to amaze me. But most importantly, why was she suddenly defending Yale? John Blacksad? I think I owe you an apology. <laughs> Do I know you? I don't seem to remember your face. <laughs> well, uh, maybe you remember my boys. I'm so sorry they wrinkled your suit. The thing is, uh, they didn't know we shared a common goal. Bobby Yale. I want to find him and get to the bottom of this as much as you do, Mr. Blacksad. So please, kindly accept my invitation. Why not share our findings? Come on. Of course. You don't mind me riding in this fancy car with a wrinkled suit, do you? Oh, I think you look mighty dapper, Mr. Blacksad. Although, if those wrinkles were to rub off on me... I always play it nice and safe. Thank you, Black Sad. You won't regret this. So let's cut to the chase. I need Bobby Yale to fight Stone. There's just too much money at stake. So, I'm offering you my help to find Yale. Let's work together. I always work alone. You know, if everyone worked solo, many people would suffer. Look at me. I could go it alone. But I don't. Please, hear me out. Let's say I bet a beer that we find Yale in three days, and you bet a beer that we don't. In three days, one of us has to buy the other a beer. Is that so bad? We're simply two grown men using our money and free will to conduct a small private exchange. And most importantly, we're not hurting anyone. So, yeah, I run a gambling business. What's so bad about that? It's immoral, for starters. Immoral? I'll tell you what's immoral. The way our government is ruining America. We live in a so-called free country. A place where honest people can make a living. 
provided they don't hurt anybody. We're not communists. Well, at least I'm not. I would have never thought otherwise. As for me... Let's just say I sympathize with their cause. <laughs> Fair enough. You sure look the part. In any case, that's not my point. The government betrays our nation's values by passing communist laws that forbid an honest man like me to make a living without hurting a soul. And that, Mr. Black said, is just wrong. I'd even say it's unconstitutional. Do you get my point now? Okay, but that doesn't justify what you do for a living. Oh boy. Did you hear anything I just said? Anyway. When the government passes these laws, there's only one legitimate weapon the people can wield. The same weapon that turned America into a great nation. Civil disobedience. So, as the proud American that I am, it's my duty to disobey. Sure. But there's no room for your ways in civil disobedience. My ways? Oh, I know what you're getting at. But what's past is past. I wasn't always a boss, you know. No, sir. I started at the bottom, when Lucky Blitzen ran the show. That good for nothing. His was a reign of terror, extortion, violence, you know, that sort of unpleasant thing. When I took over, I decided I'd make people want to do my bidding. Not out of fear, but out of gratitude. I decided to help people so they would help me. Me. That beating your thugs gave me was really helpful. Thank you so much. Ah, ah, ah. Those poor bastards didn't even know you were a detective. That you were on our side. Maybe at first. But when they tied me up and beat the socks off me, they knew very well who I was. Seriously? That goes against my rules. Who was it? All right, you don't want to rat them out. I respect that. But I'll still have a little word with them. I cannot tolerate this behavior. Please, accept my apologies, Mr. Blacksad. You see, a lot of people work for me. Many families depend on my business. Not only that, St. Christopher's Hospice practically lives on my donations. The widows of my late employees are set for life. Their kids get free schooling. The cops leave me alone because they know my business doesn't hurt anyone. On the contrary. And, ah, it looks like we're here. Yale's apartment? <laughs> I told you, I'm on your side. Go ahead, search the place. I'll wait down here. When you're done, maybe you'll change your mind and share your findings with me. Or not. It's your call, Mr. Blacksad. I'll make sure you're suitably compensated. Colbert! Wilson! 